Taylor, I'm, what is wrong? I know that you don't feel good. Tell me what's wrong. She said that made her feel better. We've been having a fit for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm Dr. Spinagle, and I'm here with Kimberly and Taylor Neighbors. And um, they have quite a story to tell that involves uh, mold toxicity and Lyme disease and a few other co-infections. And I think the best thing we can do is let um, Kimberly start telling the story and Miss Taylor. Our nightmare began when um, she was five years old. And at the time I didn't realize um, the source of this nightmare, but we now understand full picture of what was happening when she was five. But she began um, kindergarten and in kindergarten she was the leader and teacher's pet and um, all the fabulous things she could be. But um, she was not um, quite happy and she would have lots of headaches. And so um, I just thought, of course, she was just missing me all day. So that's why she was having headaches. But um, first grade started rolling around and she started complaining of blurry vision and not being able to see the board or her worksheets at school. So I took her to an ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist told us that Taylor had perfect vision and her eyes were completely healthy and there was no need for us to ever worry about her eyesight. Second grade rolls around and they start doing testing on Taylor and they inform me that Taylor can barely read <laughs> and I was devastated because she was an early reader and she had always been kind of ahead of her class and that's when the questions started rolling <coughs> in my head and um, she started complaining again of headaches and not being able to see. Um, we decide to go back to an ophthalmologist and they um, tell me that, well, Taylor's eyes are perfect. They're 20-20. There's nothing wrong with her eyes. I start noticing a lot of behaviors as I'm waking her up in the morning. I, she's sensitive to light, which she had always been, even from, like, I have pictures of her as an infant, where she, and even one, she can never go outside, you know, lights oh, are always an issue. Oh, and I one and beach trip, I, I was about seven, I couldn't open my eyes and I would cry mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I couldn't see. And she starts telling me, don't put those clothes on me, you know, I can't, don't, I, I don't want them touching my skin, and I'm telling her stop being so ornery. We got to go to school. Sure. You cannot go in your pajamas. And so the the strict the mom comes out. Would yeah, and the sheets. She didn't want them touching her. And I and she started telling me every morning. And it wasn't just a telling me. It was more of like you don't understand. You don't know what's going on with me. And she would say, I'm sick and I need help. We had to get a physical before we moved. And right and the doctor walked in and said her vision is now 2100 in a year's time and you need to take her to a retina specialist and I said oh she's got dyslexia I said we're not taking her to a retina specialist I said I've been to every eye doctor there's nothing wrong she has no tumors she's dyslexic he said no 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 you need to go to the retina specialist just to be sure I said well we'll go when we move what happened with this diagnosis from this retina specialist she wanted us to go to Emory University to, <coughs> To, to find out what they could possibly do to, to help Taylor or to slow it down or just to reinforce what she thought she had found. So we head up to Emory University and we run through gamuts of tests, MRIs, any test known to man to find out Brain what's going MRIs, on. Everything. Everything. I mean, anything that the um, ophthalmology community could offer anyone that's losing their eyesight, we had those resources. And the best vision that he could get on Taylor at the time was 2100. So her vision had fluctuated. Uh, the ophthalmology folks at Emory, did they say it was a retinal deal as well? He, what they said is that they, her eye, the actual eyeball, was completely healthy. They said, we don't know why she's having vision problems. And they said, we can't find anything wrong. We don't know, so we're going to just call it unknown. We were crossing this bridge of her vision, and then Taylor starts, um, and I was not satisfied with just unknown vision loss. Okay, so I'm going to continue to dig. 
and we start having um, some buzzing in her ears that turns into screeching. The loudest screeching she said that you can imagine and it's 24 hours a day. And when she starts having these episodes of screeching, she's losing more of her vision. So her vision would just go black to where she couldn't see and she'd get on the floor because she was scared because she couldn't hear and she couldn't see. So I call a Lyme literate doctor because mm -hmm. I've been reading so much mm -hmm. and every symptom that you could imagine that she had, she was starting to have. Her hair was falling out, She was mod her skin was modeling, the lymph nodes were everywhere, she couldn't see, she couldn't hear, she likes, I mean every, any nightmare of a symptom. Um, she started um, cramping, she couldn't walk, I couldn't touch her, I couldn't wash her hair. So we get to this Lyme doctor who we were thankful for. She intervened in a time in my life right. when I felt like we either have a child who is a pathological liar, mm -hmm. who really doesn't have vision problems and has manipulated me, her teachers, everyone, mm -hmm. or we have a really sick child. And I begin to think sick because of the hair falling out, the physical mm -hmm. symptoms sure. on her. So I didn't... That can't really make it happen. Right. There were things... You can't make your lymph nodes swell, you know, mm -hmm. just by thinking it. So she does diagnose Taylor with Lyme's disease, and mm -hmm. we begin a treatment of herbals and mm -hmm. 25 different antibiotics. And what starts to happen, Taylor starts getting sicker. Mm -hmm. And as her mom, I'm saying, she doesn't have Lyme. If she had Lyme, we're giving her an antibiotic, she's going to get better. Well, Taylor started having restless body syndrome. Mm -hmm. And this means um, every... She was actually three, starting to have pre-seizure stuff. Yes. Those can the seizures and what yeah. happened is she would start about six o'clock every night. She'd start rocking and mm -hmm. twitching, and then about eight or her nine. Twitching was one side or both yeah, sides. Yeah, all over her body, both sides, all over her body. Just every, I mean, she couldn't stop moving. So um, she would start running up and down our street for two hours. So she had actually gotten to the point where she couldn't no, walk. No, she wasn't walking. I carried her for about a year. So she would have been in a wheelchair. Did you have a wheelchair yes. for her? Oh, she wouldn't do it. Oh, so so yes. she wanted Mama to pick her up, this nine-year-old. And so and I would carry her, carry her through the store. And people would look at me like, okay. what are you doing? But psychologically, <laughs> you felt that was better than being in a wheelchair. Yeah. She yeah. felt like it. I think at the time, what she explained to me was if she felt like if she got into a wheelchair, that she would never get there back now. out. I want you to go back to her vision was getting worse by the day mm -hmm. and we're now you said third grade yeah the big microscope deal the whole yeah. magnifying glass mm -hmm. but it got worse right she she was actually essentially yes. went blind yes and that's when they were saying it was probably the rod cone and so for a uh, mother to have a child when I, I i would hate to speak for everyone but for my own personal i would think losing your eyesight after having eyesight would be one of the hardest um, senses to lose. So after being told that, um, my life began to just spin out of control because I had a child who was looking at me saying, well, I can't see. I need you to turn on lamps at night and I need flashlights. I need you to hold flashlights on the side of my eyes while I sleep because I'm scared I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to be able to see. So she was, I was sleeping with her and lamps were on her eyes and I was laying there with flashlights so she would go to sleep shining them on her eyes. And, and I would have to have a lamp um, somewhere like, or a, a little night light so that if I woke up, she would know she wasn't I would know oh my gosh. And so I slept with her on her, I had her sleep on my chest um, at the age of nine. You were carrying her. Mm -hmm. Everywhere she went. Everywhere we went. She's, she's having the panic attacks and even the schizoid, the paranoia, yeah. delusions. Attacking me in the car. I mean, we sit here and we talk so calmly about, oh, Taylor was having this symptom. Taylor, sweet Taylor was having that symptom. It wasn't, oh, sweet Taylor. It was, oh, my God, could somebody kill her or me? Because one of us has to have some relief. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's... She had an episode where the ringing in the ears started. And when the ringing in the ears started, she'd lose her vision. And she started crawling through the hall at me. And she was like screaming, I can't see. And it'll sound bad, but I got mad. I was like, you can see and you can hear. So stop. Stop doing that and stand up. And she wouldn't stand up. 
And so I started crying and I ran away from her. I ran out in the front yard where she couldn't find me. <laughs> and she pushed our glass door open and she was on all four screaming, Mommy, help me, Mommy, help me. And I mean, this had been months and every yeah. single day, day in, day out, at night, not sleeping because she's running up and down the street at night. So I'm not sleeping. She's not sleeping. And I'm standing in the front yard with my cell phone looking at her at the front door like this screaming for me to help her and I'm standing in the yard saying I can't help you you there's something wrong with you and it's not lying it's nothing she's got schizophrenia I was in such a panic of distress that I felt like she was going to die or I was going to die or we I, I, I her life was over the life that I knew up to this point you was over at one point life. you laid down on a carpet yes my face, face in the down. carpet and just and that and I I did and I let the tears just hit the carpet because I didn't even want to, I didn't want to wipe them away. I thought I, I don't care if I uh, flood the room. I hate my life. I hate her life, and I hate that we got to a point where everything that I dreamed of for her was over. And I thought, how could she have this brilliant brain and be so smart? And it's just going to go to waste. And so I laid in the floor and I asked God to just let me die because I didn't know I'd be able to be strong enough for her. And so um, that's what I did. And she didn't know. And when I saw her, I would just tell her that it was going to be okay, that this was our path. I think it was three or four weeks, mm -hmm. wasn't it, that we had yeah. your sort of vision completely? Yes. And I think we got rid of most of the ringing in the ears and all that yep. excess electricity, yeah, probably stopped. about a week. Because that yeah. was my first priority, was to bring that voltage down. And uh, yeah. we were all so excited. And we have a report from Dr. Dupree from last week. Yes. Uh, he's a retinal specialist, and he said that... Um, it's perfect. 2020. Yep. 2020 vision. 2020 perfect. When you, when you came to my doorstep, mm -hmm. it was the 2400? 2100. 2, so, and she's reading and doing her schoolwork. No more dyslexia. Reading. No more dyslexia. No. She, anyway, we're just about ready to have you go home. So every symptom you had, uh, mm -hmm. what do you? You still have a few things. We're still doing some kills right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want some parasite kill for some of those protozoa? That hurts a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. No, I actually do really good on all of it. <laughs> she really does. I mean, I, she's the most amazing patient. I, I don't think that any of my staff, nor I, will ever let you go home. No. We'll just pay you to walk around and make everybody smile, because you do it so well. Yeah.